Okay, guys. I'm back. This is 26B, Grace, Spirit of Truth. Now, we left off, because um, I had something that came up, so I had to attend to it, so it was a shorter tape. We left off uh, talking about the holy place. And the holy place is, is simply wherever you happen to be standing. If you're a born-again Christian, if you ask the Lord into your heart, Remember, he went up. When you ask him in, he comes down. The gift of the Holy Spirit is given to you. You become the walking ark. You become the tabernacle. You become Solomon's temple. Because the Holy Spirit dwells in you. So that holy place means when you see these things happening, and it says, stand in a holy place. And then it specifically says, let him who reads this understand. Is that the holy place becomes you. Sanctify the Lord in your heart. Okay. Because, I mean, how many of us has wondered, well, where's the holy place? And what if I'm standing in Pennsylvania or in New York someplace? That's how you know. Now, sometimes it's, it's uh, needful that we, like I had an agenda today. I wanted to cover certain things. You know, I usually get led by however. You know, the breeze through the trees, that's how the people are led by the Spirit. Uh, but I was pretty much led into Matthew today. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains, and let him which is in the on the housetop not come down to take anything out of the house. Remember, um, don't look back. Don't go to go take stuff out. Remember Lot's wife? Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe to them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray that your flight be not on in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Pray, pray that your flight, in other words, run. For then, and because this is it, this is when you see the abomination that causes the desolations. Desolations. Otherwise, the trumpets, the bowls of judgment, the seals being uh, broken. You understand. And it's after you see the abomination that causes those things. That's why run. For then shall be great tribulation. See, you're just in the beginning of the sorrows, my friends. The earthquakes... The uh, famines, the massive die-offs, guys, really. The massive die-offs. I cannot get over that, really. We're talking, and excuse me. Uh, okay. The massive die-offs. The, uh, oh, the, uh, the children. Guys, the children. Love of many growing cold. Uh, people don't want to share no more. You notice that? People just don't want to share no more. And I saw a Black Friday one time on YouTube I when I was looking up for uh, the famines and the shortages of food in these other countries. Uh, I, I really, it was Black Friday. It was a Black Friday. People were literally beating each other up. Tearing apart the stores. On a Black Friday. You know, that Christmas stuff they do. But after you see the abomination that causes the desolations, and we are going to get into this. And I only have, like every other pastor does on this particular thing, a theory. I'm not going to say, yes, it is of the Lord. No, it's not of the Lord. It's a yay or nay type thing. It's something that... I feel strongly in my heart could be a gut possibility. Let me just say that 
okay because we all seem to think we all know what's going down but unless the Lord actually says it to me I just got to be careful here for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no nor ever shall be the days of Noah and except those days be shortened remember the kid writing them on a tablet that's how many's left the entire forest is burned up those trees represent human beings yet only a few are left that a child could write them so don't tell me because you happen to belong to this group or that group or the catholic persuasion or whatever situation the 1.2 billion plus another what 500 million that you're okay you're secure no unless it's Christ it's nullified unless it's Christ it's nullified and except those days should be shortened there should be no flesh saved but for the elect's sake who the Lord has chosen those days will be shortened if any man shall say to you lo here is Christ or there don't believe it for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders inasmuch that if it were possible they would deceive the very elect behold I have told you before Lord saying look I'm telling you now therefore if they shall say unto you behold he's in the desert do not go there guys there's gonna be a lot of those kind of guys and there's a few now and they may be able to show all kinds of signs they are not who they pretend to be remember what the Lord said remember Acts remember how the Lord went up the angel said the same way you see him going up is the same way he's coming down and to those that are of the rapture persuasion no such thing in the scriptures however when the Lord comes back there may be in fact somebody in the field there's going to be guys. One will be taken, one will be left. They'll be too sleepy somewhere around the world. One will be taken, one will be left. You understand? I think everybody's going to know he's coming through the clouds when he does. There's not going to be any mistake. The dead in Christ are going to rise first. Those that have gone to sleep in the Lord doing what they were supposed to do are rising up first. Those that are alive and remaining, I guarantee you there's not going to be many. The Lord said, a child could write them. So if you hear about somebody in the desert, don't go there. Behold, he's in the secret chambers. Don't believe that. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shines even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For so for wheresoever the carcass is there will the eagles be gathered together and immediately after the tribulation of those days and guys you need to check out revelations these are just sorrows but there is some serious stuff coming here including war and I don't mean traditional I don't mean civil unrest. A third. What some people may not understand is when you factor in seven billion people and a third gets taken out by the first thing, which maybe is famines, pestilence, earthquakes, that's over two B as in Bob billion. The remaining five billion about you have left, a third is taken out for that. A third of what's left is taken out for that. You understand? And how there won't be much left. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven. The powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth cry, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds, the way he went up, it's the way he comes back, of heaven with power and great glory. He shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. 
Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and puts forth the leaves, you know that summer is near. Likewise you, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Truly I say to you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knows no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of Noah, before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And then it does say, Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be gathering in the meal, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord does come. But know this, that if the good men of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched, and would have not suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be you also ready, for in such an hour as you do not think, the Son of Man comes. When you see these things happen, stand in the holy place. Remember where the holy place is, guys. And if you haven't asked the Lord into your heart, you really need to do that. Now, um, something I did want to uh, brush on. Everybody seems to have an opinion. Well, I do too. I thought about things that are happening in the world. I have a what if, okay? I'm not one of those bold prophets. I just have a what if. What if, what if the Pope was a false prophet? What if there arises a leader someday that has a fatal wound? Pope shows up, supposedly prays over the beast, all of a sudden gets healed, all of a sudden, let's just call him the Pope. is this great prophet that's supposed to have come. And look what he did. And he's a Christian, though he's not a Christian. What happened if because the person that was, uh, that's called the beast, was healed miraculously by the, the Pope, the Pope's prophet, All of a sudden, everybody decides, who's like him? They build a statue. Remember Nebuchadnezzar? We went through this. Gets set up, maybe third temple. The abomination that causes the desolations. Wouldn't you think the Jewish population might be a little offended by somebody putting a statue on supposed holy ground. Right? Don't you think? I think. But now, let's suppose, because everybody is saying, well, this guy brought, brought him back to life. Let's raise a statue to the guy. Gee whiz. Then the Pope causes it to speak. The statue. Let's call it a, um, an abomination. What's the Bible say? It causes it to speak. Then, people are required, this is right around the corner, guys. 
required to get a mark on their forehead or either arm really the Bible pretty much says any arm and make allegiance to it again remember Daniel his companions and like Daniel those who don't do this by order of the king or whatever the world leader happens to be they have to be killed of course because they're not complying with the new world order and the falsities that you're seeing when you see the abomination that causes the desolations you don't think that the Jewish brothers and sisters are going to know what that is whence it happens you know the globe is going to be following this guy wherever he goes thinking what a guy he'll have all the answers guys out of chaos remember these things are happening now drought famine there's going to be limited wars there's going to be food shortages like crazy all over the world it's happening now love of many waxing cold brother and sister nation against nation all these things and then after enough riots have taken place in those fallen states enough war has taken enough lives and enough earthquakes have done what it's done doing and remember all this is planned by the Lord he knew everything that's why it's written guys it is a what a love letter from the father himself it says look don't be deceived it's here then what happens out of the ashes out of the ashes people are going to be tired of the wars they're going to be tired of the famines they're going to be tired of of feeling afraid and this Let's just call him the beast. It's going to rise up. World power. Nobody's going to suspect. Going to solve all the problems. Then maybe he might take a shot or a sword. I think it's a sword rune. I don't know how that's going to happen. To the head. false prophet I think is the one that's going to heal him all set up they're so mystified by it that this guy who solved all the problems they erect the statue and they put it someplace it should not be the abomination that causes the desolations standing in the holy place What was it that Nebuchadnezzar did that was so offensive to the Jews? He set up a big statue and he wanted people to prostrate themselves before it and pray to it. And this time, false prophet's going to make a talk. Right there, you know he's a false prophet. Then each person from the lowest level in a prison to wherever you are in the hierarchy of this fallen civilization is going to be required to get a mark. And if you don't, you're an enemy of the state, you're a combatant. They got a list. They knew Christians weren't going to do it. That's why they're on the list. If you're not a Catholic, you're on the list. If you speak out against it, you're a potential terrorist. Have to pick you up, put you in a FEMA camp. Do you understand what I'm saying here? It's not far-fetched. That's a hot that's my opinion. Everybody's got one. Now 
I do want to try to get into a few moments of grace, spirit, and truth. All mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. John 17, 10. I am glorified in them. All yours, he's talking to the Father. All yours, Father, are mine. And all mine, Father, are yours. And I'm glorified, that means he is too, in you. Both the Father and the Son make their abode in you. Okay? You want to? Keep down. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the other most part of the earth. Acts 1.8. Do you see what I'm saying here? When the Holy Ghost comes in, and in my case, the Lord says, I got to go to India. Now, look, I didn't dream I got to go to India. It wasn't me that said, I'm going to go to India. I didn't think I got to go to India. But those true, uh, you've ever heard of those callings where the Lord says, David, you're, you're a prophet. I don't want to go into it. I'm just a preacher, but I have to say that because that's my call. And you're going to India for seven years. So I'm going to India for seven years. I know it. I, 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 I don't know how I'm going to get there. I'm a poor guy. I don't have any income. And I'm, you know, health ain't so great. But that's what the Lord said. Remember Amos? He was a farmer. He was out there plowing the field. The Lord said, Amos, go preach. Okay. Am I right? I really like the Lord. You know, I, I kind of hope personally that the Lord laughs once in a while. Uh, I wasn't laughing for uh, many months during some troublous times I were going through. But I just like him. You know, he's a good guy. Now listen, other most parts of the earth. So until it's done, guys, it's not done. So if you got a call to go somewhere, you ever notice when May I share? Okay. That's my motto. <laughs> when we all think we got a call, and that's all of us, I, I actually heard them. What do you want from me? Okay. Four angels. Two didn't talk to me. They just go, Shh. So I went, Shh. Mm. Might I share, though? We always think. I got to go to Miami, preaching the gospel in Miami. Or I got to go to the Philippines. Where's the other ones, uh, which I would never go to, but somebody thinks I got to go save the heathen in Tahiti. You know that ain't so, right? I made a, a little thing, you know, like, Lord, why don't I just go to Hawaii? Or, mm -hmm. you know? Because, Dave, I don't need you in Hawaii. And I wouldn't want to go anyway. When I first got saved, I wanted to jump the mercy ships. Go into places like Africa and those places. And uh, I was stopped abruptly. Uh, one of our prophets stood up in the congregation and said that, I, that somebody was going to be here. He says, you will hear the Lord. He will speak to you. He will cause you to walk in his way. And that was something I had prayed for the night before. But I figured, well, I don't know. Maybe it's a commercial prophecy or something. Maybe it was for everybody. Not so. That very evening, I actually was called by the Lord. And uh, it was great. A lot of things in between now and then. But here I am. Now listen. But we all think we're going somewhere. But look, guys, it says it right here. Until it's preached throughout the whole earth, the Lord's not coming back until it's done. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be here no more. The love of many is waxing cold. People are serving the creature more than the creator who is blessed forevermore. Uh... A lot of us are called to go to Egypt, yeah, or the Philippines, or they're called to go to India, North Korea, 
China, Iran, if you don't go, if you're one of the ones that are called guys, and if you're not sure, ask the Lord. You know, the Lord has a way of making known what His will is. All you got to do is ask Him. Say, Lord, I don't know what I'm supposed to do as a Christian. Is there any place I'm supposed to go? Am I supposed to do anything? He'll let you know. He will. So, let's get back to it. And we are his witnesses of those things, and so is also the Holy Ghost whom God has given to them that obey him. Acts 5.32 When you wake up every day, you get up and you ask the Lord for a blessing on the day, and if a temptation goes your, you know, come towards you or gets thrown at you face first, resist it. Walk in his way. If you're not sure about things, ask forgiveness. I do. I mean, if, if I'm not sure if I've done something wrong, I just rather ask forgiveness. I don't want to take that chance, okay? There is therefore now no condemnation to those which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Romans 8 1. Day by day, guys. From glory to glory. Picture it this way, if you will. When you're in your prayer room or your prayer closet or the bathroom sitting down, wherever you happen to go to talk to the Lord, a little spot. As you're looking at the Lord in faith, talking to Him, did you know that the glory of the Lord is looking back at you? From glory to glory we are changed from glory to glory had you ever noticed that sometimes you just feel the warmth of the Lord in there and you're just happy sometimes when you're feeling a little down or see something you don't really wish you did see or you're thinking on the Lord that little bit of warmth will come in let you know he's thinking about you too there's nothing that's going to happen in this world that he wants you to be worried about. Now I know I got a little upset about some things, but listen to me and listen well. There is nothing in this world he wants you to worry about. And why? Because he says don't. He says, I'm telling you the love letter. I'm telling you these things. Uh, Margaret, Michelle, uh, Daniel, Robert so you don't worry I'm writing you a love letter telling you that do not fear be bold walk in faith not sight pray to the Lord every day guys even if it's just a few minutes take time out of your day because he gave his life for your life just to say hello I'm not saying go up there and jangle like I do. I'm sorry. I, I just talk a lot. But go up and say, Lord, I just want to uh, ask you to help me walk today out. If there's anything I should do, if you could just give me a, a hint, cause me to walk in your ways. That's the best way for me is cause me to walk in your ways and do the thing I'm supposed to do. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Guys, this is especially to you. Because remember what Paul says? I speak this to uh, uh, the males mainly for our infirmities of the flesh. Guys, no. And I know... And I've, I've asked the Lord about this. I, I brought this up to the Lord. It says, Lord, I can't look anywhere. I don't watch TV anymore. I can't look outside anymore. Because somebody may be wearing something they ought not to be. Or somebody, and how many beaches? 
do we see on TV? That's why I don't watch TV no more. I don't want to see it. I don't need the temptations. I just don't want them. Don't you think the enemy's not going to use that against you younger men? You understand what I'm saying? I'm talking to the younger guys. It can happen. And it will happen. you got to understand that the enemy will not use your strengths against you. Not your muscle. He's not using the muscle that you have for a, this thing or that thing. No, he's using your weaknesses. So if your weakness, friends, new brothers, if your weaknesses were the ladies, you think he's going to use anything but that? If your weaknesses were, I don't know, alcohol, you don't think he's going to use it? He's not going to use your strengths. He's going to use your weaknesses. But you know what the Lord said? I pick the things that are weak. And then he'll tell you, after you're going to him and saying, Lord God, what do I do? Lord Jesus, help me. My grace is sufficient for you too. For in your weakness, my strength is made perfect. Therefore, let's just glory in our weaknesses, right? So that the power of Christ may rest where? where? Upon us. I kid you not, guys. So, don't mind the things of the flesh. And yes, we die daily. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enemy against God for it is not subject to the law of God neither indeed can it be so then those that are in the flesh cannot please God but you are not in the flesh but in the spirit if so be the spirit of God dwell in you now especially when you get saved when you are a new brother or a new sister, it's going to seem like a whole lot of things just came up against you and you don't know where they came from. Because, guys, the enemy wants you to fall. He wants you to fall flat on your face. He lives to hurt Christians, okay? And there are those that work for him that cannot be seen. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We do wrestle against principalities and powers in high places. That can include government. Look what's going on. But also spiritual wickedness in high places. That's right, my friends. They're not ghosts and they're not poltergeists. Uh, and they are not ETs. Now, I don't know where you are on that subject, but believe you me, believe you me, they were run into a lot during the time of Jesus. They are in the air. There are some individuals that for whatever reason are being buffeted by it. You think the Lord that you're not, okay? For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed, made into, to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Who he called, them he also justified, made righteous by his spirit. Not justified to do anything bad, pastors. And whom he justified them, he also glorified, Romans 8, 29-30. Now, I also want you, if you have a pen or pencil handy, I read you this, but I want you to refer, there's a refer to this, to John chapter 20, verse 13, and Romans 8, verse 11. It's a refer. Do you not know that you are a temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? And if any man defile the temple of God, God shall destroy him. Him shall he do. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. 1 Corinthians 3, 16-17. Refer 
again to Matthew 3rd, or no, excuse me, Matthew 15, 18 through 20. And on that, I want to also say, if anyone does sin, like uh, the apostle said, we have an advocate. Please don't panic. Please don't be so scared that you won't eat. If you do make a mistake, you have an advocate. What did Jesus say? How many times should I forgive my brother if he sins against me? The Lord says, uh, I don't say seven times, but 70 times seven. Or in other words, if you want to be forgiven by God. Do you understand? Every word, God, excuse me, every word, guys, we live by. When Jesus said that, we live by every word of God. We truly live by every word of God. Especially when the Lord says it. Okay? So. And because you are sons of God, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, Galatians 4, 6. Fear God and live, guys. And when you go before the throne, remember who you're talking to. I talk to him, I don't know, like he's my friend. I guess if I saw the glory up there, I'd be a little hesitant to speak at all. And uh, I think of Jesus as, as uh, my friend. I guess at the end of it all, if he calls me his brother, that would make me very happy. But I just would be happy just being his friend. Really. Um, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Ephesians 3, 16. I think it's 3. Yeah, 3, 16. Guys, he went up. He came down. He dwells in. And if the Spirit of God is in there, guys, and we all have to say yes, amen. You don't want to do the same things no more. You don't want to go there anymore. And the wife is sufficient. Okay? Um. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we should ask or think, according to the power that works in us, in us. He went up, he came down, he's in. He which has started a work in you will be faithful to complete it until the day of Christ. He who has begun a good work in you will finish it, okay? And that was in Ephesians 3.17. In addition, there's also Ephesians 4, 6, and 5, 9, and 18. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brothers, beloved of the Lord, because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through the sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. 2 Thessalonians 2.13. Now, I've got to emphasize, really, that with the days that we're living in right now, we really have to be supportive with one another. We also have to wake up and know what time it is on the uh, the end of days clock. I've never seen anything like what I've seen in the world today. And neither have I heard some of the stories I've been hearing like today. We did not have YouTube years ago. But guys, truly, truly, if you really want to get a good idea of what's going on in the world, 
and not just take it from people like me or anyone else telling you about it. Get on YouTube, key in animal die-offs. Uh, believe it or not, the giants were real. Lots of them. No. There wasn't a Mr. and a Mrs. T-Rex on Noah's Ark. Think about that for a minute. If you were to take all the known species of dinosaurs and put them on a boat, the equivalent of a little less than the Queen Mary, and all the other animals that we know of that had to exist, do you really think that there had been enough room on the ark for Noah? Do you think Noah would want to get on the ark? The child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Luke 2.40, and the Spirit of God was upon him. And how do we know it was the Spirit of God? Well, let's venture into it. Because, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, Spirit of God, descending like a dove and lighting upon him, Matthew 3.16. So we went from Luke where it says grace and we went to uh, Matthew which says spirit. Same event. That's a wake up, isn't it? Having then gifts differing according to the great... Some of these you've heard before, but I keep... You're going to notice that I'm going to repeat some of this stuff over and over again, not to annoy you. because I want you to hear it so you it gets in there and you're going to be your best defense when you go before the pastor as a brother I think we might have an issue here with scripture you think we can look at this together remember Luke 240 word grace Matthew 316 word spirit both. Having then gifts differing according to the grace, this is the word grace, that is given to us whether we prophesy, let them prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Romans 4.16. Now, the word grace, right? Same event, same thing. Same, same thing. For to one is given by the Spirit, the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge, by the same Spirit, to another faith, by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, but all these work at that one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Again, the word grace, defining the gifts, Romans 4.16. In this, set, in this uh, long, long paragraph, all spirit, the word spirit, in 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 11. If you ask him, he'll tell you. Now listen. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. That is in 1 Corinthians 15.10. Let me tell you something. This was the mystery Paul was talking about. Now. Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus the Christ through the will of God 
First Corinthians what? Paul and Apostle. These are all, all the others. Paul and Apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God and Timothy our brother unto the church of God which is at Corinth. Second Corinthians. But you shall receive now see this is how you uh, the, like 1 Corinthians 15 10 the grace of God I am what I am but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you power to do what power to become sons of God and the unction what you have in part you get in full Acts 1 8 while Peter yet spoke these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word. Acts 10 44. And I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. Acts 11 15. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. Guys, you know what the gift is. For if through the offense, in other words, the act of one, carnally, earthy, One be then many be being dead. That means everybody after that sin took place. And do you notice something? May I share? I was thinking about this too, but I I didn't think I'd remember it. Before, okay, before sin took place in the garden. Thank you, Lord. I really wanted to remember this. See, he's faithful. Before sin took place in the garden, okay? We're with me now, right? There was no sin, right? Of course not. God made Adam, he made Eve. Breathe the breath of life into him. We know what that was. No sin. And what's it say specifically? They were not ashamed. They were naked, not ashamed. It was, to them, it was normal. Right? Not to be ashamed about. There were no bad thoughts. There were no temptations. There was nothing. And the best part? Yes, there is a best part, guys. Not paradise so much. Although it was nice, you know, perfect climate, fruit growing all over the place. No. Best part? God lived with them. Best part. The Lord said, don't touch that fruit. Now that you go to evil, don't do it. Everything else you can have. But don't do that. The enemy got in there and the Lord already knew, guys. He already knew. Everything. They did do it. And what was the first thing that happened when they disobeyed? They were ashamed. They lost their innocence. They, they began to put leaves on them to cover things, you know. They knew. God knew. And then everybody started passing the buck. Did you eat of the tree I told you not to eat? The woman you gave me gave it to me and I ate. The Lord God went, it's like a father would do, to the, to the woman. What have you done? The serpent beguiled me and I ate. Either way, everybody got tossed out. What was lost it was the innocence. It was the communion. It was the friendship. It was the Lord. That that's what was lost. Innocence, <coughs> fellowship with the Lord. There was no sin, guys. There was just nothing there. It, was, it had to have been nice. I gave him back something I never took from him, the Lord said. And I was wounded in the house of my friends. That breaks your heart. 
ってねでね、今、パープラムリー。You really gotta see it, guys. I don't normally recommend a lot of stuff. But if you need to know what it was he did, not the plot, it just tells a story. You might look at things a little different. What was lost, and it took God with us. He was the only one that could do it. It took him to take us by the hand. May I share? When I was first teaching my young ones about sacrifice, you know, you can't do that with three little boys. It, it does not go well.、And、I love my three boys. They were as cute as buttons, guys, when they were little. And I tried so many ways to teach so many lessons, and I hope the Lord Jesus had a sense of humor. Well, I tried to teach him about self sacrifice, you know, you're paying for somebody else's sins. I was trying to tell him what Jesus did for us, right? Well, it didn't go well. So when I have one, he's my oldest, and I'm praying for him. Please keep baby in mind for me. Pray for him. I love the kid, but he needs to meet the Lord real badly. Anyway. What would happen is something would go amiss. Kids did something. So I told them that when they did something wrong, the idea was I would go in the corner and stand there for a certain, you know, for periods of time to teach them that sometimes when we do something wrong, somebody has to pay. I don't know what I was thinking. Well, it didn't go well. And it didn't make anybody remorseful or anything. I, I thought my three boys would be, oh, poor dad. I don't want to do that to that man. No. So, but that was the lesson I was trying to get a hold of on them. And I tried many things, guys. But, we lost something in that garden, did we not? It took God to come back. He had to do it himself. You ever think about that? Jesus is the Son of God, but the Father was with him immensely, without measure. In, a, in essence, the Lord had to pay for all of us. Now, if that d o n t break your heart, and I have every reason to be remorseful now. So, brothers, the next time you're tempted to look out the window, don't do it. If you did, please ask the Lord Jesus for forgiveness. Look, I'm not going to throw stones. Gee whiz. If you know anything about it, about me at all, after all these tapes, you know I'm not going to throw stones at you. I just want everybody to go home. You understand what I mean? I mean that from my heart. I've seen things. Now, listen. So, when the Lord came and He gave Himself for us like that, what in His essence did He do? I was wounded in the house of my friends. I gave them back. These are Jesus' words. I was wounded in the house of my friends. I gave them back something I never took away. Are you getting this? I gave them back their innocence. I gave them back fellowship with the Father and the Son. I gave them back hope. I gave them back salvation. I gave them back paradise. They just have to catch up with it. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's what he did. And as soon as we understand that, guys, in the heart, I mean, look. It has to go from here. We think too much. It has to go from here to here and then here. What did the Lord say to me? I had a vision. 
What the Lord say to me? He says, Dave, you got to take the tape off your eyes. Dave, you got to open up your eyes before I can help you. Right after that, everything got better. Albeit it was a little amusing because I didn't actually open my eyes because the Lord said open my eyes. I opened my eyes up because I can't go into it, but but it got better. And here I am. I right, know listen. I'm not trying to take up too much time. I feel like it shortchanged down the last video, so that's why we did a 26B. And there's probably some of you out there right now that says, Oh Dave, I wish I hadn't done a 26B. I could have did till tomorrow. Alright, listen. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus, the Christ, we shall be saved even as they. 1511 Acts. Through the Lord. He went up. He sent down. Pentecost. Perfect example. And by their prayer for you, which long after you, for the exceeding grace of God, where is it, guys? In you. 2 Corinthians 9 14. It's there. Why nobody's seen it is, is amazing to me. I guess you got to be wanting something more than an excuse. And I think that's why whoever's watching watches. You say, well, you know, gee whiz. I'm not going to condemn you guys because Jesus said, I didn't come in the world to condemn. But that, but to save. As disciples or Christians, or just Christians, guys, if the Lord gives you a message, don't be afraid to share it. I was. But don't be afraid to share it. Get on the first two or three or four little 15 minute videos. Might be a little weird. That's why I have my daughter, my son, and my wife sitting over there. So I don't feel so weird talking to a you know, piece of machine. Be it justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, Romans 3.24. Being justified by His grace. Um, perhaps spirit. Being justified by His spirit. Being made righteous by His spirit. Can't be justified by anything else but His spirit. Sometimes I lag a little. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. It is of faith. You can't receive it. Abraham's the father of what? Faith. What did Abraham need faith for? Stand before me and be thou perfect. You don't think it took some faith? And the Lord said it, so wouldn't you believe it? To the end, the promise, the promise, might be sure to all the seed, not to that which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham. Everybody assumes it was Isaac, and he did believe the Lord about Isaac. But before Isaac, stand before me and be thou perfect. Something to think about, huh? Who is the father of us all? Romans 4, 16. I, I have to share. Now, and I'm getting about done for the day anyway, but let me just leave you this here. Does not the Bible tell us that we are under grace? Are we not, as the Bible says, justified? These are like to say everyday folk sitting in the pews because they've heard it every Sunday. That's what they think. And further, are we not at liberty? God surely knows that we are not able to keep all these commandments, doesn't he? After all, we're not under the law, but under grace. I'd never. Let me explain something. After all, we're not under the law, but under grace. Jesus never abolished the law, guys. I don't know who you've been listening to, but that never happened. How many times so far have I read you things concerning keeping the commandments by Jesus, the apostles, and so forth? Look, what Jesus did, 
is he took the that was a heavy you ever notice that there's more of the Old Testament than the New Testament think there might be a reason instinctively when you wake up in the morning you're not breaking any laws are you instinctively you know that if you go and speed on the road you're going to get a ticket the worse the offense the worse it can get right no matter what you don't break the laws they weren't made for those that were going to break them but for those who what would break them kind of a light bulb goes on don't it same principle guys the laws of the land were not created for those who would not do it. They would break it instinctively. But for those who would, and you got to pay. And any kind of offense calls for a recompense. You understand what I'm saying here? However, when Jesus went up, and he can have you ever listened to what he said guys what in the old test what in the new testament he is the new testament remember that he said this is what you do this is what you do this is what you do am i right then the apostle paul who was chosen handpicked by christ himself did the rest of the job but by the spirit have you listened to everything in there instinctively when the Lord comes in he dwells in the believer both the father and the son through faith faith you believe it, it'll happen and you're asking God to help you walk out that life right by faith you're not going to do the things that he doesn't want you to do. He's going to write them in your heart. If you're living carnally in the flesh without Christ, let's just call it like leaving the garden. Then murders are going to happen. Cain. The love of many is going to wax cold. Sodom and Gomorrah. The Lord's going to wipe it out. Noah the but if you ask Jesus into your heart by faith and you say Lord Jesus I know you got to be there please help me out Touch my heart with your Holy Spirit. Cause me to walk the right way. Forgive me of all my sins and cause me to do the right thing day by day. Every day. Instinctively, guys, my belief is he's going to instinctively write these things in your heart. Your new way of living is you're a new person. You're not going to do the things you used to do. And, uh, And we can't. Ever. In a world that's quickly corrupted. In a world that. It's just so bad out there. It's like the weeds have grown up in the garden. So severely that it choked the garden out there's not much left it's going to get far worse these are the beginning of the sorrows but Jesus uh, Jesus commandments really when you think about it they're not grievous love your neighbor as yourself you can wrap it all up even Jesus said to one fellow you're not far from the kingdom of heaven because he asked him he says, what must I do, Lord, to, to enter into life? Jesus says, what does the law say? He says, hear, O Israel, 
thou must love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your might. And the second's like it. You gotta love your neighbor as you love yourself. Jesus says this do and you'll live. Now the man willing to justify himself because the Lord looked at him and loved him. He said, well, who's my neighbor? Well, what's something that the Lord said to do? Love your enemies. That's why you don't hit them. That's why you don't take violence out on them. That's why if they ask you for something and you have it in your power to give it to them, give it to them. Even if they don't like you or anything like that, just give it to them. Now I know what the Bible says. That by doing this, you're heaping coals of fire over on their head. I think the Lord really does want us to, I think that if the person is just a hateful person, unfortunately that, that's so. I cannot deny that. My hope is, okay, my hope, is that that person, because he's seen a little love come from you, a little light he saw, a flicker, says, gee, that person didn't even like me, and I don't even, or that person is giving me something, I, I don't even like him. And yet, here he is giving me some food. Your hope is that he's gonna yearn for what you got. Not your food, not your stuff. He just might be tired. He maybe just wants to do better. That's our hope, right? Isn't that our hope? I know there's people out there, guys, that are dead set against anything. I mean, just hard knocks pray for hope the Lord softens that heart because I can guarantee you my friends there are stuff out there you do not want to know and we've only got a limited time left look on the fields guys they're ripe all ready to harvest the Lord said and there are some people who are called to go out there. Be ready. Don't store up things that are on this planet. Don't be going after the new car, the new furniture, jewelry. Don't store up those things, guys, because moth and rust and thieves break in to steal. If you really want to store up some treasures, give to your neighbors. Help out if you're asked to. Pray for people that, especially when people ask you to pray for them. Draw close to the Lord. He said he promised, I'll draw close to you. Cleanse your hands. Stay away from the dirt. And remember where you were. Don't go back. It was not what I had planned to talk about today but I hope it was okay okay uh, because by the grace of God I am what I am too I'm just an old guy called to be a preacher of sorts pray for me and I pray for you I pray for you right now and if there's anybody out there that's uh, looking to taste that the Lord is good, he's waiting, whatever your name is, he is waiting. He says, behold, I stand at your door, Robert, Penny, Michelle, Lorraine, Michael, and I'm knocking. If you hear my voice, Open up the door, ask me in, and the Father will make our abode with you, saith the Lord. And you're going to have a great life, and better yet, I'm going to raise you up to glory, saith the Lord. Keep the faith. If you make mistakes, say you're sorry. Okay? God bless you. I hope you have a really good day. And I hope you're with me tomorrow. Thank you.